I get this question a lot. Which supercharger to go with? 1320 or the 1900 that you see right here? Point blank, simple answer, get the 1920. Simplest answer, reason why? It's only $200 more. With $200 more, you get 0.6 liters more um, of a blower than you do versus the 1320. Now, let's do a little comparison. At 15 pounds of boost, you're on a 1320, you're probably gonna, with bolt-ons, you're probably gonna be pushing on 93 gas, you're probably gonna be pushing 350 wheel horsepower, 300 wheel torque, roughly. My setup, 15 pounds of boost, 384, let's round it down, 380, 312 um, wheel torque, 310. So in aspect, you're getting 30 more wheel horsepower and 10 more wheel torque for 200 extra dollars. And to me, it's a no-brainer. And your torque curve and horsepower curve, it, it's gonna stay the same, basically. Essentially, it's gonna stay the same as a 1320, but it's just gonna be uh, 10 more horsepower throughout the whole range. It's not like a turbo where you get a bigger turbo, your peak horsepower, your torque curve, everything, power curve, power, the whole power band just shifts to the right. Uh, it's not like that. You know, When you upgrade supercharger kits, the, the curves basically stay the same, it's just, you get more horsepower throughout that curve range. So that's basically it, man. If you guys are really contemplating between the two, I highly recommend the 1900. Now, some people ask me about the 2300. I was very close to getting the 2300. I wish I did get the 2300 uh, sometimes, but this 1900 has a lot of potential. And as you guys know, I'm about to take, down, take my car down to Merc Racing tomorrow, switching E85, doing a couple extra mods to it and hopefully I could be pushing well above the 400 wheel horsepower range. My goal hopefully be 350, all right, not 350, 450 wheel horsepower. So we'll see. Um, so back to the explanation um, the between the two. Also, I forgot to mention, with the 1320 and the 1900, let's say you buy a 1320 and you're at 350 wheel horsepower at 15 pounds of boost. You wanna make more horsepower. You're like, man, shit, I wanna change the crank pulley or change the supercharged pulley. All right, you change the pulley. You wanna make 380 wheel horsepower. You gotta change the pulley, up the boost, you got 18 pounds. Now, you got 18 pounds. 93 is only gonna be, you know, you're gonna have very limited um, uh, boost pressure you could apply, especially on 93 octane. And let's say you're able to do it. 18 pounds of boost, you're able to do it 380 wheel horsepower. Cool, you got it. However, now your intake temperature is going to be running a lot hotter. The blower is going to be spinning more, 18 pounds of boost. And now your intake temperature, you're going to make the after cooler work even harder. It's going to be harder for it to cool down the uh, intake temperature. And um, that could cause knock. And now you're only running 93 octane. So in a sense, it's just better to get the 1900. 2300. I don't know just because I haven't seen anyone with the K24Z7 with a 2300. It's going to create a lot more low end torque. I don't know the limits to this motor in terms of torque. I don't know if it can handle the low end torque on a 2300. I mean, really think about it. The, this motor is a 2.4 liter and the fucking supercharger is a 2.3 liter. So it's basically the same size as your motor. So it's, it's, it's hard to say. Um, I wish I probably would've got the 2300 just to experiment, just to show you guys, because there are a lot of people that have the 1320 and the 1900. And a lot, of those people, a lot of people have ran both setups and have no problem on stock motor. So 2300, I'm not sure, but usually I think the 2300 is a couple hundred dollars more on top of the 1900. So most people just tend to go with the 1320 and 1900. Uh, just for money reasons um, there was a guy i did talk to on the forum he was thinking about getting the market racing kit he was talking about maybe getting the 2300 and i told him hey um basically what i told you guys i don't know how much torque low and torque these motors could handle but hey more power to you um what i suggest if you guys do decide to get the 2300 go with the rsx type s crank pulley from like 0203 so it's a smaller crank pulley and get the biggest supercharger pulley you can. Start off with low boost, man. And that's what I did. And just gradually up the boost. I know it sucks because you got to keep on getting it retuned and everything like that. But 
you don't want to just slap it on, push all this horsepower, and you don't know how long the motor's gonna last. So I went in stages with my with my kit. You know, I just wanted to play it safe. So I start off at 10, 11 pounds, went up to like 13, 14. Now I'm up to like 15, 16 range, and now I'm stepping up to 18 range. And but then again, I am switching to E85. So, anyways, guys, I hope that answers your questions. If you guys, you know, ever contemplate between which blowers to go with. I highly recommend the 1900 just because it's only $200 more than the 1320. 2300, like I said, I don't know because I don't know if these motors could handle the additional low end torque. And, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. And it is a little bit more pricier than the 1900. If I had to guess, it's a couple hundred dollars, maybe max 500. I'm not sure. Should have looked it up before I made this video, but you guys could check it out on Merck Racing's website. Just Google search Merck Racing Supercharger Kit and you'll see it and you'll see the price up there. Um, but that's that's about it guys tomorrow's a big day driving down to Merck again I think there's a third or fourth time driving down there switching everything got a different clutch uh, clutch disc I'm just upgrading the clutch disc and a couple other surprises for you guys and I'm very excited man. I haven't been excited uh, for modding a car for a long long time I'm really anxious to see how much horsepower this thing could push on E85 and I'm gonna be changing the pulley I don't know if I'm gonna change the crank pulley or just change this pulley here, the supercharger pulley. But my goal is 18 pounds, and we'll see where where she does and um, what kind of numbers she gets. And um, hopefully, that in sense, you know, I'll, I'll set up a little. I do have a couple more runs lined up. Hopefully, that sets up more runs. And uh, you know, I've been racing a couple more people uh, past couple weeks. I haven't raced in a while, but. A few weeks ago, I raced a couple of people, and there's quite a few people that want to run me now. But um, and I told them, hey, guys, better do it now before I upgrade everything. And they've been slacking, so now <laughs> I'm gonna come back, and it's gonna have more horsepower. And hopefully, my next issue is gonna be traction. I am gonna try to. I do have the Michelin's Pilot 4S, S4, 4S. What's it called? S4s, 4S. Got the Mission Pilot 4S, and I'm um, going to be changing the fronts. Um, been researching a lot. I might go with the R Triple Eight Rs. Um, I could get something with the softer comp compound, like the Nitos. Uh, I think NTO Fives or something like that. But uh, this is not going to be a off the line um, race car. Uh, it's more for roll racing. So with that, I don't want the sidewalls to be too soft. Um, I do still want the car to handle good. So I think the R Triple Eight Rs are are right in between where you know they provide the better traction but their star wars a little bit harder than like something softer that will give me more grip off the line so we'll see videos i'm just rambling now um i might be doing a video on the trip down there uh maybe do a video with jose uh owner of merc racing um ask him a couple questions uh and upload it but we'll see we'll see but um like i said hopefully i'll have everything within a month have a retune and i'll definitely post a lot of videos of it racing pools and blah 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 and look out for a reaction video um, that should be pretty interesting so till next time guys